Creating content. Now you have your blog and your brand, and you know the kind of personality that you want to portray. Everything is in place for you to start filling your site and your social media accounts with content. And yes, it is implied that you should have set up social media accounts on at least the top sites by now. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Pinterest. If you haven't, then go and do that now. Now you can begin posting. And here's what that is going to entail. Blogging. To become a top blogger, you need to blog. Obviously, our aim here is to go full-time as a blogger so that we aren't reliant on any other source of income and we can potentially give up the day jobs. One of the first things you need to know in order to do this, then, is that your blogging is going to need to be highly regular. You need to post at least once a week, but where possible, I recommend that you post much more frequently. This is another thing that should be fairly obvious, but that seems to elude a lot of new bloggers. If you want to blog full-time, then you need to treat it like a full-time job to begin with. You can't blog for two hours a week and expect to become top dog. Blogging frequently will help you to get more attention on Google because it will create more content for Google to index and because it will help you build momentum with your readers. You'll be giving them a good reason to come back regularly apart from anything else. At the same time, even if you only have long tail keywords, meaning that you only occasionally get a visit from Google on each post, the more you have, the more you will scale up your profits. Look at it this way. If each blog post you have gets 20 cents a month from Google and you write 40 blog posts per month, then you'll still be making $96 within the first year. Fortunately, the nature of Google and blogging in general is such that things like this tend to snowball. The more people read your site, the more you'll get shared, and the more additional people will come to your site. So the more content you write, the better. Only problem is that it takes a lot of time to write content, and when you start out, you'll probably be trying to fit this in around your other daily activities. That's why I highly recommend that you consider using somewhat smaller articles for the most part. Make these around 700 to 800 words, and that way you can more realistically manage to write several a week. You can even write these at the start of the week in order to make sure you have a batch ready to go. That said, there are a lot of positives for writing long-form content, which Google is a big fan of, Long-form content is anything 1,500 words or longer, with lots of links and with lots of images, etc. These types of posts can become resources, meaning that Google will feature them more prominently, and meaning that your readers might share them as useful tools to illustrate a point or bring someone up to speed on a subject as part of a discussion. Ideally, then, you will intersperse your lighter posts with a couple of mega posts to keep your site more varied and to give yourself the best of both worlds. Ideally, posting three shorter posts a week and one longer post would be an excellent place to start. What to write? Okay, so the next question is, what should you be writing? This is going to depend on the nature of your site and the niche, of course. But some things that will be true regardless of your topic are, it should be written in a colloquial, friendly manner that is easy to read. It should provide value to the reader. It should be unique, exciting, and engaging. Again, Stay away from things that are generic, and instead only write topics that are exciting, new, and original. For instance, you might find a way to combine two different subjects in a unique and interesting way. What footballers can learn from martial arts. Or you might just dive deeper into a subject than most people do. The psychology of gardening. Why is it so addicting? Again, stay away from the generic stuff. You want your content to be so unique and exciting that when someone sees the title, they feel compelled to read it. Treat each post like a product and put all the same care and time into it as you would with any other product. Social media posting. That's how you will keep your blog alive with content. So now what about your social media? How will you fill this with interesting new posts and make sure that the people want to keep reading? The first thing to consider is that once again, your content needs to be regular. There is nothing worse than a completely dead social media page and this will absolutely drive people away from your brand. A tip to help you keep the content flowing is to write posts in advance and schedule them using a tool like Buffer, as well as to consider creating synergy between your social media accounts with a tool like IFTTT. IFTTT will make it so that you can ensure all future posts to Instagram with a specific hashtag will also be posted to Twitter, for example. 
thereby ensuring a steady flow of content on both channels, even though you're only creating media for one of them. If you are creating a personal brand, then this allows you to post about your day and hopefully, you'll find that inspiration strikes regarding when you can post and what you can say. Using your mobile phone will help a lot here, as you always have them on us, and so it should be easier to pull them out to snap a photo of your workout, of what we're eating, or of where we're traveling. This way, we are bringing our audience along with us throughout our travels and our routine, and thereby promoting the brand and our lifestyles. Of course, you also want to share the content you create, and you can do this directly through WordPress. Another tip, don't be afraid to post old content that you made a while ago. This is a great way to get people to see posts they might have missed and to make more use from your evergreen posts. This is also something to keep in mind when you're posting seemingly into the void and no one is reading your work. While you might not be getting any feedback now, it doesn't mean those same posts won't get read in the future. Again, the most important thing to do is to provide value of some sort. The way you do this will vary from social media platform to social media platform. On Twitter, the most common way to provide value is with entertainment, humorous or interesting snippets relevant to your niche. On Facebook, it's a good idea to share content that you find interesting and that your audience might as well. Look at Facebook pages like LAD Bible or IFL Science for a good model of how this works. If you post a lot of interesting things and your branding is clear, people will follow you just to stay updated. And finally, on Instagram, the best way to provide value is by offering inspiration by letting people live vicariously. This is why people like to see pictures of people doing yoga against sunrises on the beach or working in cafes and suits. Is it narcissistic? Maybe, but it's what people want to see, and it can work wonders for your brand.